Let's bring you some further analysis on that Bloomberg exclusive on insurance giant AIG. Just how the insurance company ended up owning such horribly toxic assets. Here's what we found out. AIG agreed to insure mortgage bonds that held a special feature. As good loans matured, they could be replaced with bad loans. How could that have been possible? Was that legal? Let's talk to a lawyer who used to work with another bond insurer, AMBAC Financial, Thomas Adams of Peyton Creek and Adams. So this sounds like, I mean, we, we all know that the AIG uh, narrative here, this new element that these CDOs had portions of it that could have worse and worse uh, mortgages sort of added in there, junk stuffed in there is what we've learned. How is that possible that the structure could constantly be uh, remade, <coughs> replenished and made worse? Well, these were these were like funds, like bond funds as they were set up. So they had an original pool of assets they, they invested in, but those bonds that were in the pool could pay down over time. Usually after about three years, they would mm -hmm. start to amortize. And with that freed up principle, the manager could go out and buy uh, more bonds. And uh, simply by doing so in 2006 or 2007, buying anything would have been quite a bit more toxic than what they had originally in the deal mm -hmm. in 2004 or 2005. So this practice though, is it all that unusual? Uh, it depends on the structure of the deal. In addition to uh, replenishing based on collateral that may have paid down, they also had discretionary trading mm -hmm. in a lot of these deals. Up to 15% per annum could be traded by the manager. Um, and that was a limit that was typically negotiated at the time of uh, the deal closing. So in this case, you know, back in 2004, 2005, limits would have been put on by the certificate holders or AIG on how much could be traded. So uh, well, that guess, could affect what happened down the road. Because as you just said, you know, continuing to, to add in bonds in those years where we, we knew that there were problems in the housing market in 07, in 06 time periods, uh, during which um, Joe Cassano, the head of financial products unit, said, you know, we're, we're staying away from, from getting right. real exposure during those years. The fact that the actual product had this element that allowed it to continue happening without necessarily a decision making process leads you to the question of whether he really knew what he was saying to be true or whether this was just sort of um, a glitch in the structuring. Well, these managers build themselves as experts in the area. So people in AIG's position relied on that expertise. TCW, for instance, was the biggest and supposedly the best manager of these types of CDOs. Mm -hmm. And so there is a degree of reliance on the duty of the manager to protect the interests of the uh, bondholders. So, that being on TCW? TCW's responsibility to manage prudently mm -hmm. for the benefit of the uh, investors or insurers in the transaction. But the product essentially, it, by the way it was structured, was virtually guaranteed to continue to decline. Uh, I think that depends on what they uh, chose to do with their investment discretion. Had they not invested in anything at all, perhaps they wouldn't have experienced that, mm -hmm. uh, sat on cash, for instance, which they had the ability to do as well. So AIG's argument, though, is that um, you know some of this decline that happened was something that no one could have predicted. That these were you know once in a lifetime events. That this was a collapse of the bond market. That and and the financial structure basically that led them to implosion. Does this article? Does what we learned through these filings and, and through these documents that were obtained change any element there? Uh, I think the CDOs really were just toxic creations in a lot of ways. So they had uh, incentives as a manager to um, uh, maximize cash flow to the equity investors and for their own benefit because they got performance fees for doing so. So even as the market was obviously tanking for these types of bonds, they were still incented financially to continue to put in bonds rather than sit on cash. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's the nature of the way these CDOs were created. I don't think uh, that people were that aware of that back in 2004, 2005. 
your bottom line is that you're saying it's not all that unique to AIG. Uh, I think, well, no. CDOs blew up across the marketplace. But, but, but the and situation was, outlined here. Um, unique to AIG? No, I think it was uh, something that a lot of people experienced without realizing just how toxic things were going to get. All right. Thank you so much for your analysis. My um, pleasure. That, uh,